Hey, and welcome back to another video. And in this video, we're going to look at how we can use the color picker in Swift UI to easily select and store colors. So let's get straight into it. So starting with iOS 14 and above, Apple added a color picker to Swift UI. This color picker is a handy tool that allows us to easily select colors from a control. So what we're going to do is see how we can actually bind a value from our color picker to a view so a user can choose their own background color for the Tons Dev logo. If you want to learn more about what bindings are and how we can use them and also pass data between views, you should check out my videos State in Swift UI and Binding in Swift UI. So I've got an S image asset already in the project if I just show you here. So we just go to our assets folder. You'll notice that I actually have the logo thumbnail, which is a smaller version of my um, logo. And also I have the Tons Dev logo here as well. And what we're going to do is actually add this onto our screen within a V stack and clip it with a shape. So obviously you're not going to have this image, so you want to add your own. But let's go into our content view and I'm going to do a bit of typing and then break it down. So what we have here is we have our image that we reference from our assets. We've just set it to resizable so we can resize it. We're giving it a fixed size of 200 by 200 and we've also clipped a shape of a circle around it. Now you can't see the circle just yet because we've not applied a background onto our image to show this circle. So now let's add in our color picker and we'll go through all the different ways you can customize it. But let's just use the basic example which allows you to add a label and bind it to a color. So the first thing you need to do to create is create a source of truth that our color picker can read and write to. And we can accomplish this by using a state property. So let's add this in now. So this is our source of truth for this view. So we've got a state variable here. And what this is going to do is store the color value that we assign and bind it to the color picker, which we're going to type out in a second. Okay, so now that we've done this, what we're going to do is add a simple color picker onto the screen with a label. So let's do this now. So just below the image, let's just type out color picker. And when you initialize it, you'll see that you have a bunch of options. So the option that we're going to use is the title. But if you're someone who was working in a project that was using localized strings, you could actually pass in the localized string key here instead and show your localizations. But we're just going to use the option here where you just type in the string protocol and you select it, bind it to a color. So it's not this one, this one here. So let's hit enter. And then for the title, we're just going to enter some text in like color picker. And then for the selection, what we're going to do is actually bind our state property to this property here. So let's say dollar sign and then color. So it's really important that when you create a binding between this property and your color picker, that you actually use the dollar symbol here in order to achieve that. So let's hit resume so we can see this on the screen. So one thing to notice is that inside of the color picker here, you can see that it's actually using the color that we defined here. So the default color that you set in your color is what's being read in the binding and displayed within the color picker. So you may be tempted to actually use something like this. And this will actually clear the color from your color picker. But what we'll do is we'll get to it in a second to show what the problem is with using something like this for your users. So the next thing we need to do is actually bind this color to the background of our image view. So after we set the frame, what we want to do is choose, use the background modifier and inside of the background modifier, we want to type out color so that the color is bound to this view. And again, you're not going to see anything just yet because the color is clear. So in order to see this in action, let's actually run this on the Swift UI preview. So we just zoom out and then We'll just hit the run button at the top. Cool. And now if we tap on our color picker, you'll notice that we get the system color picker to choose colors. So we can choose a grid, spectrum, or sliders. And what I'm going to do is just select a color here like yellow. And if I choose X, you'll notice that nothing is actually happening. So why is that? Well, the reason why that is, is because we defined here that we want our color to be clear. And when you actually open up the color picker, you'll notice that the opacity by default is set to zero. Now, as a user, this is something that may be confusing and they might think that your app has a bug, but it actually doesn't. So rather than you using this clear option here, what I would advise is just to set it to some kind of color. So let's go back and then we'll set this to blue.
And you'll see now that once we set this to, we can now see the circle with the blue color and our color picker has the color blue here. And when we actually select the color picker, we get all these colors. So if I was to choose like a green and choose X, you can see now the color has been set to green on the view because it's bound to our state property and it's updating the background. Other things we can do with this system is we can actually add colors. So we can actually save colors to it and it will handle that for us. We can use a spectrum to, you know, choose a color on the color spectrum. Also as well, we can choose sliders to actually modify the color with the sliders. Or alternatively, we could actually type in the hex code for a color specifically. But let's just go back to our grid and I'm just going to set it to another random color. Let's just say purple. And we've got our purple here now. So we have this basic setup. But what we could do if we wanted to is actually customize it as well. And one of the things you could do is actually hide the label that you see here that says color uh, picker and that's displayed on the left hand side and actually just have just this color picker here. So you may be tempted to actually hide this label by just doing this where you delete the string. But this actually doesn't help us achieve what we want because if you notice our color picker is still aligned to the right hand side. What we want to do is actually control it so it's actually in the center. So in order to actually hide a label, instead of actually deleting the string, what you want to do is use the labels hidden modifier. So after the color picker, you just type labels hidden. You'll notice that it actually removes the label for us. And this time it actually centers the color picker in the middle of the screen for us. Another thing that we spoke about was the clear, you know, issue that users may have. And if you want, you can actually disable the ability to actually choose an opacity for a color. And in order to do that, what you need to do is actually add an extra parameter when you create your color picker called supports opacity and set this to false. So let's do that now. And now if we open up our SwiftUI, if we run our SwiftUI preview and select our color picker, you'll notice that we don't have the option to change the opacity of our color depending on the option that we've selected. So if we just remove our modifier to hide our label so we can get our string back, sometimes you may actually want to have your own custom view here. But what we're going to do is instead of having our instead of having this here, we're going to actually add our own label in SwiftUI. And if you want to learn more about labels, I have a video called Labels in SwiftUI which you should check out. And what we need to do is actually and what we need to do is actually remove this string from here. And instead, we want to use the closure that allows us to add a label in to this part here. So let's delete our string from our color picker like so. And then we want to use the color closure. And I'm just going to add a label in here so you can actually see it on the screen. And all this is, is it's just a label with some text. And we're using the paint palette system image. And we're also setting the symbol variant for this SF symbol to be fill, as you can see here and applying a bit of padding onto it. So as you can see, we've actually got our own custom view here. So if you wanted to, you could actually use your own custom view as a label within the color picker. And you could actually maybe do some kind of logic in here to switch between different views. So that's everything in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any feedback, I'd love to hear it in the comment section below. If you haven't already, I'd really appreciate if you gave this video a thumbs up as well as subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification bell to get updates whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you all in a bit. Deuces.